Hey Mustangs, welcome to Press Pass SMU Spotlight on Sports. I'm Katie Pratt. And I'm Hannah Jones. Let's go. SMU football improves to 7-1 after defeating Temple on Saturday, 47-23. The Mustangs got out to a slow start against the undermanned Owls, who missed 15 players due to COVID-19 protocol. Temple scored on the first play of the game with a screen pass to Randall Jones that went 75 yards for a touchdown. After trailing by three at halftime, quarterback Shane Bouchelle and the SMU offense caught fire. SMU outscored Temple 37 to 10 in the second half, including four touchdowns in eight minutes to start the fourth quarter. Senior wide receiver Tyler Page had a career high day for the Mustangs. Page caught nine passes for 131 yards and two scores. With the win against Temple, SMU remains undefeated on the road. This football season has changed the fan experience for many due to the coronavirus. SMU TV's Grace Lawrence went to ask students firsthand how their football experience has been on the hilltop during the 2020 season. I enjoyed watching the games on TV. I was kind of upset about not getting a ticket for all of them. I did get to go to one of them, but I remember for one of the one of the more recent games, I tried to get one at like five or like seven minutes after um, the tickets opened up, and it wasn't. It didn't work out for me. We're really excited to hopefully keep winning this season, even though we don't necessarily get to see them after Thanksgiving break. And I went to one game, but I got kicked out of it. <laughs> um, so that was disappointing. But yeah, we've been doing well, so that's good. Experience has been pretty good. Uh, I'm a big fan of the team, so we've been winning a lot. It's been nice. The loss against Cincinnati was a little heartbreaking, though. The SMU equestrian team is ranked fifth in this year's National Collegiate Equestrian Association Foreign and Preseason Rankings. This ties for the highest preseason ranking in program history for the Mustangs. The Mustangs had won conference titles in 2018 and 2019 and last season. They finished with a record of 8-4 ranked number 3 in the NCEA polls. They had secured the top seed in the Eastern College Athletic Conference Tournament before the postseason was canceled due to COVID-19. The Mustangs will return for their 2020 to 2021 season January 29th. The Intercollegiate Tennis Association ranks the SMU women's tennis team number two in the American Athletic Conference. Teams are rate, ranked based on the universal tennis ratings of their top six players. Mustangs Jackie Nylander, Hadley Doyle, and Chandler Carter all rank in the top ten of the conference individually. The SMU women's tennis team is looking to build off last year's success. The Mustangs were 9-5 when their season was cut short by COVID-19. The SMU men's basketball team has been tabbed as the third best team in the AAC in the preseason poll. The team returns four of five starters from a year ago and has added Cal transfer Darius McNeil to the mix. In the Tim Jankovic era, a third place in the finish in the preseason polls is the highest SMU has been since 2015. The biggest storyline for this season will be the emergence of guard Kendrick Davis as one of the premier players on the conference. Davis got the nod as the preseason first team all AAC. Tyson Jolly was the only other Mustang to be recognized. He received third team all AAC honors. The Mustangs also signed Jalen Smith on Wednesday for men's basketball signing day. Smith is a point guard at Oak Ridge High School in Orlando and led his team to the state semifinals last season. He's ranked number 173 by Prep Hoops. On the women's side of SMU basketball, their non-conference schedule has been released. The Mustangs are slated to begin playing at UT Austin on November 25th. Other non-conference games include hosting Texas State and Arkansas in December and traveling to Stillwater to play Oklahoma State. After the break, hear from a member of the ESPN programming team about the upcoming NBA draft.
plus the Masters begins Thursday. Find out what's happening right now in Augusta. We got like 24 guys on the team from all over the place, so it's really fun to get together, uh, play with a bunch of guys you don't really wouldn't get to meet before. Favorite memory was probably his first game, getting out and skating with a new group of guys, and beating up on Texas Tech. That was pretty fun. We play uh, games about twice every weekend, and uh, we play teams like UNC, Texas Tech, and sometimes Texas A&M. For more information, visit facebook.com slash SNUHockey. This weekend, we saw a return of a former Mustang to another Dallas team. SMU TV's Will Dotton has the details and more. What's up Mustangs? This is Will Dotton here with your ponies in the pros. We'll start in the NFL with a former Mustang we haven't discussed yet this season, Garrett Gilbert. The 2014 sixth round pick made his first NFL start this week for the Dallas Cowboys, who were 14 and a half point underdogs against the undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers. Against one of the league's top defenses, Gilbert completed 21 of 38 passes for 243 yards with one touchdown and one interception. In the second quarter, Gilbert delivered a 20-yard touchdown strike to rookie wideout C.D. Lamb to put the Cowboys ahead by double digits. Though the Steelers would go on to win 24-19, it was an encouraging outing for Gilbert, who could challenge Andy Dalton for the starting job after the team's bye week. Now we'll come back to one of the regulars on the segment, New Orleans Saints wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders. Sanders, who had missed the previous two games due to the NFL's COVID-19 protocols, returned to action in Week 9 as the Saints took on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Sunday Night Football. He hauled in four passes for 38 yards and made a diving touchdown grab as the Saints routed the Buccaneers 38-3. Even with the return of Pro Bowl wide receiver Michael Thomas, Sanders played a key role in the offense and he will look to continue his production in Week 10 against San Francisco. On the golf course, all eyes will be on Bryson DeChambeau at the Masters Tournament beginning Thursday morning. An NCAA champion at SMU, DeChambeau now has one of the farthest drives ever seen on the PGA Tour since putting on 30 pounds of muscle over the course of a year. The odds makers seem to think this will help the U.S. Open champion at Augusta National, as FanDuel Sportsbook has him as the favorite to win the event at plus 800. After finishing tied for 29th in 2019, DeChambeau will look to power his way to a green jacket in 2020. He tees off at 6.33 a.m. Central Standard Time on Thursday. From the football field to the fairway, former Mustangs continue to shine across the pro sports world. For SMU TV, I'm Will Dotton. Thanks, Will, for that report. The NBA draft is right around the corner. Press Pass reporter Grace Lawrence sat down with a member of the ESPN programming team to learn about how the draft will work this year. Hi, Mustangs. Welcome to this week's edition of Full Court Press, and I'm coming to you remotely from my living room here in Connecticut. The offseason continues to move at full speed, with decisions around free agency and the starting date finally being answered. Free agency negotiations will begin on November 20th, and the signings will officially start on November 22nd. Training camps will open December 1st, followed by a 72-game season starting December 22nd. The logistics such as if the season will have a normal in-season travel or have one or multiple bubbles for the regular season is still to be determined. The league also announced that the salary cap will be $109.1 million and the luxury tax will be $132.6 million. Now to turn our attention to the draft that will happen on November 18th. 
It's going to look very different this year. Commissioner Adam Silver will announce the picks from ESPN headquarters, and the players will find out from their living room what team they'll start their NBA career with. In, in years past, having the, the top draftees and their families and friends in one location, the last few years it's been in Barclays Center in Brooklyn has always a, been a huge thing. You know, every everything from the day before the draft to leading up to the draft to seeing what they're wearing. And then, of course, it's it's always a super emotional scene when they get drafted. You see them with their parents and then, you know, going up and shaking Adam Silver's hand. So, but that's going to be the biggest change is, is kind of how do we replicate that kind of that human element um, that will still be there, but not quite as, it's not quite as in your face, right? When they're sitting at, at home on their couch with their family, like it, you still have that feeling of happiness, but it's, it, it'll be a little bit different than years past um, from where you have you know, just overwhelming emotion and 10, 10,000 fans there to cheer or boo or um, celebrate trades. So I, I think figuring out a way to um, to kind of still engage on that personal level is going to be the biggest difference. Well, that's all we have for you this week. See you next time, Mustangs. For SMU TV, I'm Grace Lawrence. Thanks, Grace. Next time, Grace will update us on the top new prospects for the NBA following the draft. The hopeful start date for the NHL is just two months away. Press Pass reporter Peter Warner is here to give us his early NHL season predictions on NHL power play. What's up? This is Peter Warner with SMU TV skating at you with NHL power play. Betting lines for the Stanley Cup champion for next season have been released. The Colorado Avalanche have the lowest odds. Tampa and Vegas are tied for second, according to Bovada Sportsbook. Some statistics, though, indicate a different outcome for the cup champion next season. Corsi 4 percentage is an advanced statistic from HockeyReference.com. The Corsi 4 statistic adds shots, plus blocks, plus misses on ice. Corsi against uses the same stats, but is the opposing team's stats while the player is on the ice. Corsi 4 percentage uses an equation between the Corsi 4 and the Corsi against to determine a percentage. If a player's Corsi 4 percentage is above 50%, that means the team performs better while he is on the ice. I know it is complicated, but this is why it's an important stat. I looked at the Corsi 4 percentage for all players who played at least 25 regular season games last season on teams with the 10 best odds. This is a way to analyze who has the deepest team, which is crucial for winning the Stanley Cup. Out of the top 10 teams, the Las Vegas Golden Knights had the deepest team. 95% of their players that played at least 25 games had a Corsi 4 percentage above 50. The Washington Capitals came in at second with 89% above that halfway mark. Tampa Bay rounds out the top three at just under 86%. Of the remaining teams in the top 10, the order is Colorado, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Boston, St. Louis, and Dallas. Based off Corsi 4 percentage and the signing of Alex Petrangelo, I think it will be the Las Vegas Golden Knights who will take home the cup next season. Now, Tampa may be second on that list, but they lost Shattenkirk and Bogosian, two of their D-men, so I think a repeat trip to the finals will not happen. Bogosian signed with Toronto, as well as TJ Brody, which added that much needed depth on defense this offseason. Toronto also added forwards Wayne Simmons, Jimmy Vesey, and Jumbo Joe Thornton. With all the added depth, plus the loaded set of forwards they already have, I predict Toronto will finally take that leap fans have been waiting on for years and make the cup finals. Now for the regular season divisional winners, I think Tampa will still take the Atlantic, Washington will win the Metropolitan, Colorado will control the Central, and Vegas will win the Pacific. And that brings us back to even strength. That is it for this week's NHL Power Play. This is Peter Warner with SMU TV. Thanks, Peter, for that update. Up next, one golfer made a once-in-a-lifetime shot on the practice round that you won't want to miss. My favorite thing about the club is that I can text in our group chat any time of day and at least have one or two people respond that they will work out with me within the hour. 
six shirts. We've got we have fun meetings. We have a weekly run and a weekly group lift. Uh, plus, we get discounts at Sushi Corp, so you can't beat that. It's all about making the most of what you have. I don't care if you're in shape or not in shape. The fact of the matter is that we value our health and wellness. And as a team, as a group, as people that generally care about each other, that's what we strive to accomplish together. We have an Instagram page called Mustang Fitness Club. And we post every, like things daily on different motivation tips, different fitness tips, things like that. For more information, check out the Mustang Fitness Club Facebook page and Instagram. One golfer has been lighting up the Masters practice rounds this week. On Tuesday, John Rahm skipped a ball across the pond, landing a hole-in-one during the 16th hole at Augusta National Golf Club. With a four iron and three hops off the water, the ball went up the embankment in counter clockwise sweep into the cup. Rahm's maneuver has been done a few times before, but was extremely impressive given the golf player's performance this week. Ranked as the world's number two golf player, this was Rome's second practice hole-in-one during the preparation for the Masters. The Spaniard says he's had a special week of luck during practice and sees a lot of good things to come. Rom and over 90 other golfers have been practicing for the annual Masters tournament, which begins on Thursday. This is the first time the Masters will be played in November after it was postponed due to COVID-19. The legendary tournament runs from Thursday to Sunday with Rom, Tiger Woods, Dustin Johnson, and others teeing off to compete for the green jacket. Well, that's it for this edition of Press Pass. Be sure to check out our Facebook and Twitter and Instagram for the latest on SMU sports. As always, be sure to keep up with your Hilltop sports by checking out smudailycampus.com. You can watch Press Pass and other SMU TV shows on Channel 9 on University Park Cable. That does it for this week's edition of Press Pass. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to tune in next time for all the latest happenings on SMU Sports. We'll see you back here December 2nd. Pony up, Mustangs. SMU TV and the Division of Journalism want to thank our underwriters, North Park Center in Dallas, Javier's Gourmet Mexicano on Cole Avenue, and Advance ER off West Lovers Lane. We appreciate your support of student media.